worship. I really believe that the Lord, you know, uh, wants to do something tonight in our service. I think we had a great service this morning. I can hear you guys from the back. And so let's just see what we can do, you know, do tonight. You know, that was this morning. We have needs tonight as well.
for that because I know without a doubt the Lord's touched me and I'm just thankful that it's heard and she answered our prayers. I've been here lately just deathly sick. Feels like I was fixing the clock out on y'all. Um, to the point to where I didn't really know what to do. I then got scared about it and then started worrying. And I, I'll show you something when I was sick. I opened up my Bible and I was just sitting there and just took off work just sick, man. I've never had anything like this. They think my thyroid might be messed up and some vitamin D deficiencies. Just hurt all over, just sick, just sick feeling. And couldn't shake it, couldn't get over it. And the Lord took me to a scripture. They sung this song just a second ago. And the Lord took, took me to a scripture. And, and all that that I've been facing, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, this is it. I'm going to be taken out by an attack from the enemy. And God said, I want you to go to Genesis chapter 4, verse 15, just a moment. And I want to show you something that you've never seen before. He said, I want, to, I want to tell you this. He said, And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him. And then he also says, He said, Sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain. God said, I want you to know today. He said, you may be sick. You may be down. You may be where you at right now in the test of your life. But he said, I want to know, tell you tonight that I have placed a mark on you and you are mine. Sister Heather, I said, I'm scared to death that they're going to say I got cancer. Yes, I'm being honest with you, I'm human. Right. Devil's trying to take us out one by one. Right. He's trying to take you mine. He's trying to take you by your health. If you had not wondered what's going on just yet, it's Satan trying to take us out because he knows what God is fixing to do. Yeah. Has a hook. Can I tell you tonight that God has placed a mark on this building? And there is the gates of hell shall not prevail against God's going to make this thing go river without you. Chosen to build you, saith the Lord. 
In these times, said God, have I had my hand upon you? In these times, said the Lord, have I been directing your paths? And in these times, said the Lord, have I been building your faith and strengthening your trust? And in this time, said the Lord, have I not told you I will reveal myself strong and true? And in this hour, said God, look not to the front or to the back, but look up, said the Lord, for in this time, Am I working in your midst? And in this time, said the Lord, am I building in you and doing new things in you, said the Lord? In this time, said God, I have chosen you. I have brought you in for this time, said God. Take up your cross, said the Lord, and walk with me. In this time, said God, have I chosen you. Can I tell you tonight? Come on. The Lord just took me to Job when he was speaking. Come on. Job was in the same situation we're in now. <coughs> we're wondering when the next attack is going to take us out. But can I remind you today that God told Satan? He said, You can tempt him, I'm going to take the hedge down from him. Church, we're going to be tempted. We're going to be tried. We're going to be put, put through the fire. Yeah, your health is going to fail, but God's going to raise up a standard against it. But here's what he said about Job. He said, I put a mark on Job. And he said, you can do anything you want to do with him, but you can't kill him. The devil can do anything he wants to do, but he will not kill you. God's placed a mark on you. He has chosen you. You are his. Don't think that you're going to be taken out. Don't think that you're not able to handle this test and this trial that you're fixing to face or facing right now. But God has marked you tonight. He's marked
Somebody in this room, 
been having a fight in your family. I'm fixing to drop you a handful on purpose. Are you willing to step out and pick it up? He's been after your babies. He's been after your youngins. He's been after your relationships. Right here in front of the altar. I'm going to drop you a handful on purpose. There's another one. There's another family. I'm going to drop you a handful of in the middle of your finance and he's trying to destroy your peace uh -uh, you gotta pick uh -uh, you gotta pick 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 you gotta He's got all up in the middle of your finance. Amen. He's trying to destroy you through worry and doubt and fear and all of
prophet come down the road and walked out in the field where that young man was he had this thing that he always carried over his shoulder everywhere he went it's called a mantle and that young man was out in that field and he was just plowing minding his own business that old bald headed preacher stepped over the fence and walked out in the middle of that field and walked by that young man and never said a word to him. He just took that mantle and kind of draped it over his shoulders and kept walking. And the young man stopped his mule and he said, Hold up! Let me go tell mom and daddy bye. And the old preacher said, What did I have to do with you? I didn't say nothing to you. But when he draped that mantle over his shoulder, 
it was something began to rise up and stir inside of him and there was a call the Bible said that he broke the plow to pieces he slew the oxen made a feast and walked down the road and caught up with that old bald headed preacher And he was there when Elijah done those miracles. He was there when Elijah done those miracles. And there came a day that Elijah said, today I'm going to be taken up. And he said, what would you ask of me? And that young man said, I don't want nothing else but a double portion. What you got? Just hang on. I'm going somewhere. There's somebody in this room. You're so hungry. You are hungry for a power like you once felt. And you're hungry for a power stronger than you have ever even felt before. And the Lord just said you've asked a hard thing. But if you see me when I'm taken up, and Elijah said, I'm going down to Jordan, you stay here. And he said, Oh no, I'm going with you. And he said, I got to go down here, you stay here. And he said, Oh no, I'm going wherever you go. And they said they were walking along and they got to the banks of that old river. And there was a chariot that swooped down out of heaven and swooped Elijah up in that chariot and began to make its way up. And here stands Elisha, Sister Glenda, he's standing there looking up and he's waiting on his promise. He said, I went everywhere you went. I didn't leave you. I didn't forsake you. Everywhere you told me to go to get the promise, I showed up. Now I'm waiting, and he was standing looking, waiting upon, and all of a sudden he's looking up into heaven, and all of a sudden something comes floating back down out of the sky, and out of that chariot, that mantle fell on the ground, and that young man walked over to the banks of that river, and he picked up that mantle, and he said, let me just see you, and he walked over to that river, and he said, what more art thou, O Lord God, of Elijah, and he popped that river and the waters parted and the miracles began to happen for him. Uh, he asked for a double portion. You read to the book of 2 Kings, you find that Elijah done, Elijah done 17 miracles. You will find that there came a day that Elisha died and they carried him outside of the city and buried him in a tomb. And if you read through the book of 2 Kings, it will tell you that at that point, Elisha had done 33 miracles. And he's dead. He's dead. He asked for a double portion. He asked for a double portion. And that meant that there was one thing that had not yet been fulfilled. Uh, whoever you are that's hungry. I believe there's at least three of you that you're hungry and you said I know what it is to have the power but I want a big 33 miracles and Elisha's dead 
And he was dead for so long, but Jim, that his bones had already dried up. And then there came a day that there was a funeral procession that just happened to be passing by a license too. And all of a sudden, a band of thieves comes out of the woods and goes to attack the funeral procession. And they said, what are we going to do with this whole body? They're going to kill us. And the Bible said that they took that dead man and they saw that tomb over in that corner and they took that dead man and they went over there and they threw his bones over in Elijah's tomb and ran off the other way. And all of a sudden, out of that tomb, that young man that was dead rose up. You know what just happened? God's promise was fulfilled because the 34th miracle, you want the double portion. I'm here to tell you that if you're hungry, If you're that hungry, I'm going to ask you to join me. I'm one of the three. I've sat around the last few weeks and I've walked in those rooms and I saw what God's doing. That has stirred something inside of me. I had an offer this week. Somewhat. My trailer's gone. I lost it. I thought the devil was hounding me and haunting me. And then what it was. God's provision. It's gone. Ain't missed a load yet. Had an offer to someone buy my truck. And I thought, oh, that'd be good. And then I got the truck and I began to ride down the road. God said, you can't do that. Because if you do that, you're going to be tied to that man for about four more years till he gets that truck paid off. So my brother, there's gonna have, there's gonna, have, there's gonna have to come a time. There's gonna be a conversation. I'm just like, I can't do that because at just any moment, my hunger to be away from the truck and full time in ministry. Because if we have to, when God, when God allows that to happen, Amen. Amen. There's big dreams. You listen to me. You listen to me, there's babies in this community that need somewhere. And it's been talked about and talked about and prayed over. There's babies in this community that need somewhere. Amen. They come. Mm. And all that I have saw God do has stirred within me a hunger and a desire to be more. I told them in the back, there comes a day that your what your goals in life change. I don't need a new truck. I got a 16 model out there that's got beat up good windshield. Hey Amen. I'm going to stick an engine in it. You'll see me in a 16 model. I don't need a new truck no more. You know where I need to be? Right here. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. If there is, there is at least two more of you that have said, I think I'm about as hungry as you are. There may be more. Amen.
For I will do signs and wonders among you, says God. I will move in ways that has never been seen before in your midst. For in this time, said God, am I going to show myself strong? And in this time, says God, I am about to work out situations that have never been worked out before. In this time, said God, are you about to see provision in my house like you have not saw before? Because in this hour, said the Lord, I have chosen you. I have chosen this house uh, to be a lighthouse to my community. I have chosen this house uh, to be a place of revival, saith the Lord. Uh, and in this time uh, I will do those things necessary, saith God, uh, to bring to pass my plans. Uh, for I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Uh, and in this time uh, will I show myself, saith God, uh, and will make these plans uh, unfold uh, and make these plans no, said God, and you will see my power, my provision, and my love for you, said God. To all that thirst, said the Lord, do I call to drink of the fountain of the river of life freely. To all that are hungry, saith the Lord, do I invite to come and dine with me. To all that weep upon me, saith the Lord, do I invite you to come and sit with me at my table. For in this time, saith God, do I desire to commune with you. Do I desire to be close with you, saith God. In this hour, I will satisfy thy longings and bring unto you things that you have never known, saith God. In this hour, said God, I will do those things that I have promised unto you. Come to me, drink of my water, eat of my face, said the Lord, and see will I not satisfy thy longings. If you're hungry, join me in this altar. I don't care if you've been here one day, two days, 10 years, 12 years. If it's your first day, you to lay all that stuff down. Just for a minute. If you want to. If you want to. I got a feeling there's some hunger on the stage too because they show up early. Amen. They prepare. Ooh. Oh, I want you to just lay your hand over on your neighbor's shoulder. Mm. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, right in the hunger. Oh, God. Lord, you said they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. And God, I pray that tonight in this room, God, as your spirit has called and as your power has moved, and God, you have brought your people, Lord, to a place of surrender now. God, I pray that there be a fire. I pray that there be an anointing. God, I pray, Lord, that the hunger, God, begins to be filled. I pray, God, that tonight, Lord, you would begin to allow things to happen. Lord, that 
that day I prayed for. God, I pray, Lord, that you begin to allow doors to be open, God. Lord, they seem like they would never open. I pray, God, that you allow things to begin to fall into place that they never thought could fall into place. I ask that tonight, God, you would allow all those things to begin to happen in this house. Oh, God. Lord, I pray that the power of the Holy Ghost would begin to oh, unlock change. Lord, that was once held got to a place that no one could break free. I pray right now, Lord, that strongholds would begin to break in homes and families. In the name of Jesus, oh, Mm. Oh, Holy Ghost, I pray that the winds of your spirit would blow in, would blow in this house. Lord, right now, four winds of heaven, I call on you. And oh, 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 mm. There are three of you standing in this line. You have been waiting for that double portion. Mm. Yataboho. Shiyanaboho. Shiyataboho. 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 Richard, you lost your mind. I want you to pick up this mantle. Where are you? Come on. Richard, I've asked God for more. Ah, uh, who Ah, Ah, there's two more. There's two more. Where are you? There's two more. There's two more. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll find something. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody give me some blankets off those pews. Oh, gather me up some blankets. Come on. Hit that up. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Somebody else. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You got that man in your hand? Call on it, call on it, call on him, call on him. Come on, call on him, call on him, call on him. Call it down, sister. Come on. Oh, God, right now. Right now.
We don't see it. things inside of you.
chapter 2 verse number 14 said but Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them ye men of Judea and all that dwell in Jerusalem be this known unto you and hearken unto my words these are not drunken as you suppose seeing it is only the third hour of the day but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. 
and upon my servants and upon my handmaidens will I pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy and I will show wonders in the heavens and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor and the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before this great and terrible day and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. What are we seeing uh, around these altars and in this church? And this is the promise that God made uh, to us. Uh, this is the promise that God made. Uh, I'm going to give you the power. Uh, amen. He knew that that church, uh, they were about, those men and women that went out uh, were about to face some things that they had to have power to overcome it. Uh, in these altars right now, God's giving these young people power. Amen. He's filling them uh, with the power. Uh, and the Holy Ghost, amen, is upon them. Amen. In these altars tonight, I saw the holy, the evidence of the Holy Ghost as it flew into this room today. Amen. This is that which was spoken and promised to us. Amen. This is our promise. Come on. This is our promise. Just give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give him some praise what he's doing in these altars tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you today. God, we give you glory. Oh, the Lord, we give you glory. And all 
honor and praise. We lift you up today, Father, above all we lift you up today. Oh, for who you are, for what you're doing in our nation. Oh, we need you, Lord, in honor and praise, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you glory. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Ooh, we got a bomb shining up on the sky. Mmm. This is what was promised to. <laughs> this is that which was promised unto you by the prophet Joel. And in the last days I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your young men shall see me, and your old men shall dream dreams. <laughs> your maid servants shall prophesy. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. 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 God's raising up some young people. Amen. Let's go have some backbone. God's raising up some young people and giving them some fight. Hallelujah. 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 i tell you again, he's building the church of power. I don't want to be a church for the wimps. I want to be a be a church of power. Man, we want to be a church of power. That when the devil gives you his best shot, in the middle of it all, God said, don't worry about it, I'm going to march you, you ain't going nowhere. And then he'll find a different way to come at you. And you. And you. And the rest of us. I told you two or three weeks ago. He tried to take us out. He probably should have. If he could have, he would have. But he didn't because he can't. Brother Ross was wrong. I didn't get to preach out this morning. I had to say that. Amen. Uh, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? And that God knows. Some notes that I have on my little page about breaking down strongholds. Spirits that will attack. Forces that will come against us. Addictions. Depressions. Imaginations in your mind. I mean, he'll come at you in any, any way. I don't care how old, how young. No, he don't care how young he goes out. The imaginations of, of, of the mind, he'll tell you you're worthless. He'll tell you you ain't worth it. You're, you'll never be good for nothing. I got good news for you. And them weapons that I talked to you about this morning, and it breaks it every, I'm not going to preach that. It will, it will, and I believe it has broken some strongholds in this room tonight. Amen. You mean, there were, but they were things that happened in this altar that we don't even know. Yeah. I walked, and Brother Kyle was up here preaching, sharing his heart. Going spiritually, sometimes you see those chains. <laughs> He's a chain breaker. 
He's the way maker. Amen. God bless you. This is another one of them times you just hate to, amen, to shut it down and go home. Amen. But I think, I'm thankful that God does what he said he would do. Pastor, I just feel like the Lord wants me to share something. And he said, with the mature body of Christ, and I'm guessing that's you. Uh, Goliath marched out in front of the armies of Israel and challenged the armies of Israel. But there was a man, a boy, that heard that challenge and said, he's not challenging the army of Israel, he's challenging God. In our land, in our nation, today, the spirit of Goliath has been marching up and down, up and down our political system and states and our nation. And the Lord told me to tell you that there's going to be some things happening. And he says, do not let fear enter your heart. Because Goliath is coming down. But the, media, but the media is going to try to tell you that the day of the church and the day of Christianity is over and you just as well accept defeat. But Goliath is coming down. And he's, God's put wanting his people to know do not fear don't let fear enter your heart for a moment for a moment some of our religious traditions has taught us to be afraid of some things but that's not God and God said I'm going to be bringing people in to this house who are attempted to be afraid and you're going to teach them faith and you're going to teach them that the kingdom of God is exploding it's exploding in the earth God raising up his people he's raising up an army here and pastor talked about it this morning about what uh, and we are going to be filled with his glory. This house is going to be filled with his glory. And we are going to see gifts arise in us that we did not know were in us. We're going to find revelation. We're going to find knowledge and wisdom and peace for our friends and neighbors, we're going to, God's going to send us out and with one hand, we're going to pull down the forces of darkness and with the other hand, we're going to minister his glory yes. to the people yes. around the house. Yes. So I, I just feel like he's saying, tell my people to not be afraid. Don't let fear enter you. He said, in fact, the day might come when the best thing you can do is not turn on any of that media that wants to, wants to drag you down. Listen to the, what the kingdom of God is saying. Yes. The kingdom of God is exploding and it's going to explode more and more and more and fill the earth. And I'm not talking about the end. This is the beginning of some things. There's some parts of this world that have never seen the glory of God, that have never experienced some of the freedom that us Americans, us Christians, have 
And he's going to put his glory, he's going to spread his glory throughout the earth. Uh, and the Lord said, as I live, all the earth is going to be filled with my glory. And, and just expect it. There's going to be some shaking. I mean, there's going to be some shaking we haven't seen. And some of us have been around for a while. There's going to be some shaking. But you know what the biggest shaking happens? When Goliath hit the ground. I believe there was some shaking going on. And the forces of darkness are coming down. And you and I are going to be a part of it. The pastor shared this morning about some of the things, some of the tools that we'll be using. But he's going to teach us. And, and I just, I just, the thing that just burns inside of me is do not let fear enter your heart. Do not be tempted to be afraid. No matter what your eyes see, there are some things that are going to happen. But, but his glory is going to be manifest. Leave me with this thought. Adrian Rogers tells the story of a little boy. The little boy was in his yard and his daddy come home from work. The little boy was out there and he was trying to pick up this great big rock. Trying to roll it over. Move it out of the way. The little boy was straining with everything that he had. The daddy went over and sat down on the porch and just sat there for a little while and he watched the little boy as he tried to push that rock. And finally, he went after and he said, son, what are you trying to do? He said, daddy, I'm trying to move this rock. He said, you don't have the strength? And he said, no, daddy, I don't. He said, I have used every bit of strength that I've got. And daddy said, are you sure? you used every bit of the strength that you got? And he said, daddy, I've used every ounce of strength that I've got. He said, no, you haven't. He said, because there's a bigger strength behind you. You hadn't asked me. You hadn't asked me to put my strength with yours to move the rock. And the daddy got down on the ground with the little boy. And they put their hands under the rock together. And together they lifted that rock and moved it out of the little boy's way. Together, with the power of God, he is building a church of power. Our, what he's called us to do, his strength, his power, we don't have to be afraid. We are I, the, whole, the Holy Ghost said, Art, we are to lead the charge into these things. Yeah, yeah. And that is why he is doing what he's doing in our midst. He is building a church of power. Because somebody's got to take, somebody's got to be the lead. Somebody's got to go. I mean, he's not, all these things that we're seeing that we're so proud of, he's, he just, he's just not doing that so we get a good name. So we have a number. He's building some things. I mean, God is building some people. He's building people to build a church. He's building a church to go into the world and change the world by the church. Jesus and 12 men turned the world upside down. What can Jesus and the church like ours do? Amen. It's happening. It's happening. God bless you. I love you. Uh, vacation Bible school. But. We're just blown away at the number of people that have signed up to help. Thank you for all of your help, for, for your volunteering. If you have kids, even our people, go online and sign your kids up. Uh, we need to have our kids signed up just like the people. There's been some that have already signed up, but just a couple of them have been our people. So you have kids of this age group that's coming to Bible school, go on there and sign up from for that for your kids. Next Sunday night, we're going to have a baptism. We'll have a short service in here, and then we'll go outside and have a baptism. We're up to six now that's going to be baptized. i got to get you that list. We added another.